So we, we want to be able to do this for any type of system. We haven't restricted. I mean, linear time invariant is sort of uh, uh, implied in all this. We're only considering those in this class. But we're going to start off with something simple, a first order system, and just look at it in general. So what happens if you have a first order system that has this input-output differential equation. Now, you could have other input-output differential equations that are first order. Um, if it's linear and time invariant, it almost has to look like this. There is a possibility that you can have a uh, time derivative of the input added as well, but it's less common. So let's say you have that. Um, we're going to analyze this and determine the frequency response of this type of system. It's a very common first order system, so we'll go through and develop it. So the first thing to do is to find the transfer function. And since we have the input output differential equation, it's pretty easy to do, right? So how would I rewrite this left hand side if I'm going to try to find the transfer function? So times times y of s, right? The complex amplitude of the output. And then I technically I could write u the st, but we know those are going to cancel, right? So we'll do that. K u of s times e to the st, but once again the e to the st is cancel. So we have that. And just from the differential equation, and let's solve for h, which is defined, the transfer function is defined as being the output complex amplitude over the input complex amplitude. Right? So if we solve for y over u, we get k divided by ta s plus 1. So it's a pretty simple little transfer function. And the next step is to find the frequency response function, which we can find by just substituting in s equals j omega, right? So that's pretty easy as well. So we'll say h of j omega is equal to k divided by 1 plus, and so I, I switched the orders of 1 plus, I plug in j omega here, so I pull the j out front, it's complex, it's imaginary, uh, times ta omega. And that is, we'll call this equation 1. So that's our frequency response function. So bam, bam, that was easy. But now we're going to find the steady state response. Okay, So recall that the steady state response for a system to a sinusoidal input is this. So this was one of the boxed equations from the previous set of notes. The steady state response is just the input amplitude times the magnitude of the frequency response function times sine of omega t, the original frequency plus the original phase plus phi of j omega, right? So we also said where the magnitude is this root sum square and the phase is the arctangent of the imaginary of the real. So we just need, so in order to find this, we have h of j omega, right? That's all we need. We need h of j omega, and we have this output, which is pretty sweet. That means we have the steady state response to the system just if, if we have the frequency response function. But we need to take its magnitude and its phase. And so that's the last thing to do is to take the magnitude and the phase. So if we want to do that, um, we can do one of two things. So we can either compute the magnitude and the phase directly from here, uh, which 
in this case is actually easier to just say what's the magnitude of the denominator what's the magnitude of the numerator and divide those two and then you could also do the phase of the denominator phase of the numerator and then add the two right so just like we did with phasers and mechatronics you could do that here um, or you could go to the definitions to, you go to three and four which just say find the real part and the imaginary part of this complex number uh, complex function and that's not very hard either. I'm going to opt for that way um, just to show you and to use the formulas that we have. But if you wanted to just directly compute the magnitude and phase of equation one, the frequency response function, that's totally cool. And in, and in this case, I think it's actually easier, but we'll go the long route. Um, so we opt for the, for the long route here. And we say that, OK, h of j omega Let's rewrite it in terms of an or a real plus an imaginary. So how are we going to do that? We've got, I can't get it on the same screen. Oh, I can. We've got this. So how do I write this as a real plus an imaginary? You've got a complex number in the denominator. The word rationalize might sort of float up to the surface of your psyche right now. Rationalize so that you have a real number in the denominator and the complex number comes to the numerator. Rationalize. Visualize. Rationalize. I don't know. It's just floating up to the... It sounded very new agey. Anyways, uh, so let's multiply it by the complex conjugate of the denominator. 1 minus j ta omega, 1 minus j ta omega, times, which is just 1, right? We're just multiplying by 1. Just a convenient 1, so that we can rewrite it the way we want. OK, so the denominator ends up being real by construction. And the numerator ends up being complex. So let's rewrite this. Notice that there are some common terms to both the real and complex parts. There's the k that comes out. The denominator here is going to be 1 times 1 is 1, plus the cross terms cancel by construction. And then there's going to be this j times j, which is negative, and there's a negative, so it's plus. Ta squared omega squared. The ta is, so it's going to be 1 plus ta omega squared. So that is in both terms. And then we're just going to have a 1 minus j ta omega remaining. So we are ready to write down the real and imaginary parts then. So the real part. the real part of h of j omega is k over what? 1 plus. Yeah. And what is the imaginary part? It's also a ratio. Negative k ta omega divided by 1 plus ta omega squared. Do we need the j in here? No. No, that's right. It's the imaginary part. It is the coefficient of j, but not j itself. j itself doesn't come in with it. So if. Can you say that again? Oh, okay. Uh, whenever we take the imaginary part of a complex number, we're taking the coefficient of j, but not j itself. Okay? The imaginary part doesn't include the ma imaginary number j. We're just taking the, the coefficient of j. Just by definition. That's, that's always what we do when we take the imaginary part. We just take the coefficient of j. Yeah. So we lost the 
This is one minus j omega tau. We want like the k minus k go away. You know what I mean? Uh, well, k is just common to the two. So it was factored out here. So when we wrote them, we had to distribute this, right? So k 1 plus tau omega squared would be times 1. So that's what the real part is. And then the imaginary part is negative tau omega divide, uh, times k over 1 plus tau omega squared. Yeah. So then I'm, uh, and pardon me for going a couple minutes late here. Um, I'm going to plug into 3 and 4, which, so I, real and imaginary parts, we can just plug into those. And then they simplify down greatly. And, and actually, in this case, I don't think it was worth going through and defining what the real and imaginary parts were. I thought it was a good exercise to go through and use the formulas that we defined. But you could have immediately computed what H, the magnitude of H and J omega of H and J omega is and the phase from H of J omega itself. You don't have to use the formula for, for it, necessarily. So the magnitude simplifies down to being k divided by the square root of 1 plus ta omega quantity squared, which is very simple. And the phase is just equal to the arctangent Remember, it's going to be the arctangent of the imaginary over the real. Notice that there are a lot of things that are common in the imaginary over the real, right? And most of it cancels out. Everything, in fact, except for the negative ta omega. Those are the, that's the only part of it that's left. So this is between this, so 2, this is part of the solution. But then these last two give us the final expressions for the magnitude and phase of the frequency response function. And so we, now we have everything we need. We have the steady state response. And so what's interesting is not to, so we're going to plot something with Mathematica. I just, I stuck the whole script in just so you could see it. It's very trivial. Um, we're not going to plot versus time. No, we could plot two versus time, but in fact what's more interesting is what the magnitude and phase of the frequency response function are, because it tells us what happens at all different values of frequency. So if I plug that in, I'm going to plot, uh, so the, the horizontal axis is going to be tau omega, and that is a way of non-dimensionalizing things and making it so that no matter what value of tau is, uh, we can still have the same plot. So this is true for every system of the form of our differential equation. So we're going to also we're going to plot the magnitude divided by k. So whatever the input amplitude was, we're just divided by k. And this is the response. So it always starts off at low frequency down here as giving the same output amplitude as the input amplitude, right? So the output amplitude and input amplitude are equal. The ratio of the two is 1. And then the output amplitude starts to drop relative to the input amplitude. And as you keep increasing the frequency, the output amplitude decreases more and more relative to the input amplitude. And so this is a what pass filter, low pass filter, because low frequencies are being passed through and high frequencies are being filtered out. Okay, And then the phase shift is also interesting to look at. It starts off at zero, meaning that the two, so the output and the input at very low frequencies follow each other right on top of each other, right? So like, I'm going to try to do this thing again. So, so they, they go up together, they go down together. They go up together, they go down together. And then as you increase the speed, the output starts to lag behind the input. And as you keep increasing the speed, it starts to lag more and more until it gets to negative 90 degrees. It starts to lag by 90 degrees behind. Okay? So that is uh, our first order system frequency response function. Okay? Um, all right. I hope you enjoyed that. I did. And that's what's important. So.
I'll see you guys.